I asked ChatGPT to help me predict the 95th Academy Awards, and this is what happened. So if you don't know what ChatGPT is at this point, and let's be honest, you're on the internet, you know what it is. It's an AI chatbot that uses a combination of machine learning through user interaction and available information on the internet to synthesize human written speech. So I'm gonna walk you through a few hiccups that I had along the way while trying to get it to produce some predictions for this upcoming Oscars. Firstly, the main problem I ran into was that I couldn't just ask it to give me predictions. ChatGPT is only able to produce historical information up to the year 2021. So anytime I tried to ask it to give me a prediction, it would tell me that Daniel Kaluuya was going to win Best Supporting Actor. The approach I ended up taking was giving it a hypothetical year 20XX. Within this year, I told it that I would give it a list of fictional nominees for the major precursor awards, including the Golden Globes, the BAFTAs, the SAGs, the DGA, PGA, and Critics' Choice. I had to specify sometimes that the nominees were real people, but the films in the mind of the chatbot are fictional. It doesn't know what Everything Everywhere All at Once is, but it does know who Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis are, for example. Engaging with this hypothetical year helped the bot stay on track and not get confused when I asked it to predict in this current year. If I asked it what the 2023 Best Actor nominees were, after I had provided it with that information, half of the time it would come back telling me that the year 2023 hasn't happened yet for it, so there's no way for it to know that information, despite me just telling it. I also found that inputting each precursor individually instead of all of them all at once made it much easier for the chatbot to understand. Sometimes I did have to remind it that this was a hypothetical scenario. When I didn't, it often went off on tangents about how it doesn't have access to the information, or it would sometimes produce incredibly random and fictional results. For example, take a look at this given year that it produced for me. In this year, it was able to produce Ava DuVernay's The River Runs Deep won Best Picture, while Saoirse Ronan won Best Actress. So sometimes it's interested in just producing completely fictional results, but sometimes it'll tell me predictions from a year that did happen, but tell me it incorrectly. For example, here it told me that Chloe Zhao won Best Director for Nomadland, but it told me that The Midnight Sky won Best Picture a film that only received a Best Visual Effects nomination. By guiding it through this hypothetical scenario, I was able to produce some predictions and the bot's reasoning for why these films will win at the 95th Academy Awards. Now keep in mind that some details about the films are not correct. Sometimes it might predict that a film was directed by someone it wasn't, but sometimes it gets the plot pretty well, which is really interesting for something that's only guessing off of the title. For films that had been announced in 2021, you might see it start to refer to it as it is expected to do this. It is anticipated that the film will look like this. This is because it's drawing on publicly available information about these films as of December 2021. So these might come from trade reports like Variety and Deadline reporting on early details about these films. So first up, we have Best Sound, and ChatGPT's prediction for the category is Avatar The Way of Water. Its reasoning is that the Avatar franchise is known for its groundbreaking use of technology, including its innovative sound design. This latest installment, Avatar, The Way of Water, is expected to continue this tradition, with a soundtrack that immerses the audience in the film's vibrant underwater world. The film's sound team are all seasoned professionals with numerous credits to their name and are likely to create a sound design that is both technically impressive and artistically engaging. This is really interesting because in this scenario, the bot is trying to discuss the prestige of the people working on the film, but when I ran other scenarios asking for rationales about other films in the category, it gave me quite a similar answer. In this scenario, that tells me that it's probably not using a lot of the precursor data I gave it, and is instead trying to consider narrative, which is really interesting when it's only been given information about the precursors. It's also important for me to clarify at this point that when I began the conversation with ChatGPT, I asked it to give me a list of what indicators can be useful for predicting the Academy Awards, and it told me that precursors, among other things, are helpful. It also listed box office, as well as industry prestige. A similar example to this is Best Original Score, where ChatGPT predicts 
John Williams for The Fablemans to win. Its reasoning is that John Williams is one of the most celebrated composers in Hollywood history, with over 50 Oscar nominations to his name. He's previously won five Academy Awards, including one for his work on Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List. In The Fablemans, Williams has an opportunity to create a memorable score for a film that is likely to be a major contender in multiple categories. The score will likely feature a variety of musical styles, from classical to jazz, and will help evoke the film's nostalgic tone. So of course, it's way off on the prediction of what Williams' score for the film sounds like, but it is really interesting that it's also predicting the film to contend in multiple categories, even though it already knows that it does. Next up, we have Makeup and Hairstyling, which is predicting a win for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Its reasoning is that the film is one of the most highly anticipated of the year, and the makeup and hairstyling are expected to be exceptional. Again, using that future tense language. Camille Friend and Joel Harlow are both experienced professionals who have worked in numerous films in the past, and the work on Black Panther Wakanda Forever is expected to be outstanding. The film is likely to feature a variety of intricate hairstyles and makeup designs, including the iconic Black Panther mask, which will be challenging to execute, but could be a standout achievement. So in this case, it seems like it's taking an original approach to how it's analyzing the scenario. It's assuming that the Black Panther mask will fall under makeup and hairstyling, but it's a really interesting indication of what elements it thinks might fall under physical craft categories and others fall under visual effects. Next, we have an Irish goodbye. Its reasoning is that An Irish Goodbye is a touching film that explores grief and relationships. The film has received critical acclaim for its authentic portrayal of Irish culture and its emotional depth, which makes it a strong contender for best live action short. This is probably just going off of the BAFTA win, so I wouldn't put too much stock in the direction it's taking, but it's really interesting to see it start to actually incorporate precursor data. I ran this prediction quite a few times, and it never gave me another answer, which gives me hope that it is using the data I fed it. Next up is Black Panther Wakanda Forever in costume design, which is a prediction that is solely off of the fact that Ruth Carter won for the first one. Next, we have Best Animated Feature, which is predicting Turning Red to win. This is because Domeshi's short Bao won Best Animated Short a few years ago, which is really interesting because you have to think that it knows that Guillermo del Toro directed Pinocchio. So why isn't it crafting a previous winner narrative for that? Best Animated Feature Short goes to The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. This prediction is based on the fact that it's an adaptation of a popular book by the same name, and that makes a lot of sense. I don't see how it would be able to generate a winning narrative around other films that it has no frame of reference for, but I do find it really interesting that it's able to pick up on the types of films that get nominated in this category specifically. Next up are visual effects and production design, which both go to Avatar The Way of Water. The reasonings here are generally along the lines of it being a pioneering moment for filmmaking and various other positive affirmations of the crafts regarding the film. This is also really interesting because it's now predicting Avatar The Way of Water to win all categories it's nominated for outside of Best Picture. Next, we have Best Original Song, which is predicting a win for Applause from Tell It Like a Woman by Diane Warren. This prediction is solely off of Diane Warren's litany of previous nominations, which is interesting because it failed to note the fact that she's never won. Now, I'm totally with it. I really want Applause to win this year solely because it will stop the Academy from nominating Diane Warren films over and over every single year, and that's one less film I'm going to have to watch when it comes time for Oscar season. That would take it away from Not To Not To, though, so I might retract my statement on that ground. Best International Feature goes to All Quiet on the Western Front. This is interesting because it didn't note the fact that All Quiet is nominated in Best Picture, but it did state that it received strong critical acclaim since its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. All Quiet on the Western Front premiered at TIFF. It also deals with themes that are particularly relevant in today's world, such as the impact of war on young people. Is that really more relevant today than it was at that time? For best film editing, ChatGPT's prediction is The Banshees of Inishirin. The reasoning is that the film, which tells the story of an Irish farmer dealing with the aftermath of a violent incident, has been generating buzz and positive reviews, and Nielsen's editing work has been praised for its ability to heighten tension and emotion. This is really interesting because that description isn't necessarily wrong, but it is going off of the sparse details that were available at the time it imported its data. For best documentary feature short, ChatGPT predicted The Elephant Whisperers, which it describes as the story of a community of women in India who have formed a bond with elephants and work to protect them. 
Now, there was no information available about this film at the time of ChatGPT's information database. However, it's really interesting that it predicted the film being set in India because the directors have Indian names. Next up, ChatGPT predicted all the beauty and the bloodshed to win Best Documentary Feature, and its reasoning here was that the opioid crisis in America is something that will really resonate with voters, as well as Nan Golden's heightened profile and Laura Poitras' direction. For Best Cinematography, ChatGPT is predicting Florian Hofmeister for Tar. Hofmeister is an established cinematographer with several films and television shows to his name, and Tar has been generating buzz for its stunning visuals and cinematography. True. The film is a historical drama set in Hungary, and the cinematography is said to be a standout element of the production. So I'm not sure what it's drawing on there, maybe it's just trying to predict that based on the name Tar. In Best Original Screenplay, ChatGPT is predicting The Fablemans. Spielberg is a legendary director, and Tony Kushner is a respected playwright and screenwriter who's worked with Spielberg before. The film is semi-autobiographical, and it's a coming-of-age story set in the 1950s, and it's been generating buzz for its script, among other things. At this point, I think it's starting to skew away from trying to predict things based on precursors, and primarily relying on information available at the time of its database. For Best Adapted Screenplay, ChatGPT is predicting Living, written by Kazuo Ishiguro. Ishiguro is a highly respected author and screenwriter, having won the Booker Prize and the Nobel Prize in Literature. Living is adapted from his own novel and tells the story of a man trying to come to terms with his past. The subject matter and Ishiguro's reputation as a writer make this a strong contender in the category. So what's really interesting here is it is correctly identifying that Kazuo Ishiguro has a Nobel Prize, he's an incredibly acclaimed author, but it doesn't recognize what the film is about, and it tries to create a fictional work of Ishiguro's that it's being adapted on. I'm assuming this is because of the category Best Adapted Screenplay, and it's now trying to grasp for straws. Best Supporting Actress predicts Jamie Lee Curtis in Everything Everywhere All at Once. I did not know ChatGPT was a member of SAG. Curtis has been a prominent figure in Hollywood for decades and has received critical acclaim for her acting abilities in the past. Her role in this film, which is described as a science fiction action adventure, has generated some buzz and positive reviews, and that could help her chance in the category. It's really interesting that ChatGPT is predicting a career narrative to propel Curtis to the finish line, because that's ultimately what's actually happening. For Best Supporting Actor, we have Brendan Gleeson for The Banshees of Inishirin. Gleeson is a well-respected actor with a long and impressive career, and his portrayal of an Irish farmer dealing with the aftermath of a violent incident has been receiving a lot of critical acclaim. Additionally, the film has been gaining buzz and positive reviews in general, which could help boost Gleeson's chances. This is really interesting because it's extrapolating on the information available at the time and thinking that Brendan Gleeson is the farmer in question. When if I think back on it, I don't actually see a farm outside Brendan Gleeson's house, but Colin Farrell's got the donkey. And Brendan Gleeson is the one doing the violent incident. Even so, I think it's not aware that Kiki Kwan has the narrative he has. It's primarily using public information about these actors to make these projections, and considering this is his comeback after 30 years away from the screen, it makes sense that he would slip by ChatGPT's radar. Next, ChatGPT is predicting in Best Actress, Kate Blanchett for Tar. Blanchett is a respected and established actress who has previously won two Academy Awards. She's also working with Pedro Almodovar, a director with a strong track record of creating compelling and award-winning female roles. I would love to see Pedro Almodovar's Tar. For lead actor, ChatGPT is predicting Austin Butler in Elvis. We're finally agreeing on something. Austin Butler is playing a highly anticipated and iconic role in Elvis, which will generate buzz and attention for his performance. Additionally, the Academy has a history of rewarding actors for their portrayals of real-life figures. I find it fascinating that it is able to identify trends in the types of performances that win. Next, we have Best Director and it's going to Spielberg. Spielberg is a strong contender for Best Director because he's a veteran director with a long history of Oscar nominations and wins, and his name recognition and industry clout are likely to work in his favor. It's really interesting that it's able to identify Spielberg as the most popular and the most well-connected amongst these five Best Director nominees, and it seems like it's just going with a career narrative here again. 
And best picture goes to, you guessed it, The Fablemans. My prediction for best picture is based on the pedigree of the film's producers and director, as well as the fact that it is a highly anticipated release from a well-respected director. The film is also an autobiographical story, which tends to appeal to Academy voters. These are all really interesting observations, and none of them are untrue. And I do find it really fascinating that it's able to identify certain trends in films that win similar categories. It's able to identify that films that typically win director and screenplay, in this case The Fablemans, ends up winning Best Picture as well. I also find it really interesting that it continued the nine-year streak of Best Supporting Actress being the sole win for that film. It predicted Curtis and Supporting Actor and predicted Everything Everywhere, Nowhere Else. It was a bit of a headache to get ChatGPT to produce these results, but it is fascinating now that it has. Let me know what you think about ChatGPT's predictions. Do you agree with it in certain categories? Does this reflect what your predictions might have been if you got to see the nominations a year and a half before they ended up coming out? Let me know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe because I've got a lot more content coming soon.